Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And I've got a very special guest with me today, Paul. And Paul is a, a client of ours who bought a home recently. And uh, so we're just going to chat, Paul, and, and discuss what the process was like for our listeners and viewers, whether they uh, you know, are thinking of buying a home. Now, I think you're a seasoned pro. Have you bought a few homes in your, in your days? Uh, I have bought a few. Okay. Four or five, I guess. Four or five. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty seasoned because yeah. the average person only buys places. about four or so in their lifetime. Right. So four or five years, you're yeah. a pro. So I bought in Pembroke, bought in uh, Halifax. So when I was in the forces and being moved around, okay. we ended up buying houses when uh, you know through that process. So. so you're used to fairly quick criteria. You know, you come in, you got three or four days to buy a house and... And back out, right? That, that's how it was on those initial buys. But then mm -hmm. the, the last house we bought, well, I guess two houses ago, we bought farm property. Okay. And so actually that was a much longer process, as you probably know. <laughs> and yeah. so I, I'm kind of, I, I guess I would just say I, I've had a chance to experience kind of, you know, come in, you have four or five days in a house hunting trip to try to find a place right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, other experiences where we've taken a, a lot longer to try to find a certain property that we were looking for. Yeah, and when the the house we we found for you, you actually had time, right? You weren't under a lot of pressure to buy something right all. away. But we did find something very quickly in that particular case. Yeah, well, um, it I think it happened. I, I felt like it it happened in the right time because we did. Uh, that was when you'd uh, broken your your uh, ankle. Yes. So <laughs> during that time, I worked with Candice. So. I okay. actually ended up looking at about 10 or 11 different houses with Candice and okay. uh, didn't really see anything that I really liked. And then all of a sudden that one came up, the one I ended up buying, and um, mm -hmm. it was the right one. And, and I hobbled over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think you you were a little better by then. <laughs> it had uh, been a few weeks, but uh, it worked out really well. Awesome. I'm really happy with the place. Okay, great. So what, what caused you to call the Decker team in the first place? Like, how'd you find us? So... Um, there's a couple of folks at work that have worked with you before. Okay. And uh, so they're all, you know, good friends. And when I said that I was looking for a new place, mm -hmm. um, they all recommended you and said that they'd have really good experiences and uh, that it's not only you, but, you know, your whole family's kind of involved and how much they appreciated working together with your son and with Yetta. And, uh, and so when uh, the opportunity came up and I was looking for a place, Mm -hmm. um, I was. I, I wanted to call you first, okay. based on that referral. Oh, great! And so, what was the process like once once you called? What what happened next? Well, I think um, fairly quickly we made an appointment for me to come and see you, mm -hmm. and we had a, a private appointment in your office, and you know you were kind of curious about what I was looking for. Where did I want to look? What kind of process uh, was I expecting? You know, what experiences I had in the past? And um, I thought we had a really good, about an hour, an hour and a half, where we sat down and kind of talked about my goals and what I was looking for and the kind of house that I was looking for. And then we sat down in front of the computer and we kind of looked at the city and we mapped out the areas that I was looking. Right. And so I thought that was pretty helpful. And then um, we set up this system where you, would send me listings, I don't know, sometimes it was every day, sometimes it was every <laughs> other day, of yeah. uh, new listings as they came on the market. And um, so through that process, I was able to, you know, get a really good sense of what was out there and what I was looking for. Okay, so so that hour, we spent about an hour and a half, like you said, a rather consultative. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, we had to take care of a little bit of paperwork. Yeah. But also, it was really good to get to know you understand your goals, your, your desires for your home. And then uh, we did do set up that search like you talked about and put the, pr the criteria in for where in the city you wanted the property and price and all yeah. those kind of things, bedrooms, number of bedrooms and garages and all those things. And our system actually was checking for you. You may not have known this, but it was checking every two hours. Wow. Yeah. So every two hours it would check and if there was something new that matched that criteria, it would email it out to you. And that's why some days you might have gotten two, three emails, and other days you may not have gotten any because nothing new came on the market. But I, I got to admit, the, the thing I liked about it was, like, I think we all get tons of emails now. Right. And um, 
I, I, I didn't want to just be receiving all these emails and have to sort through it. And the nice thing was I could go to this web page that was dedicated to me, <laughs> and it had my kind of search criteria in there and all the properties that had, uh, had been found that met those things that I was looking for. And I was able to go in there and look at all the properties. Um, I could kind of favorite the ones that I really liked. Right. And then when I went to set up appointments with you or with Candice, I could just say, hey, I've favorited these properties that I want to look at. Mm -hmm. And whoever on your team would be able to go in there and, and refer to that. And so I didn't have to email listings back and forth. I didn't have to sort of sort through my inbox all the time trying to figure out where was that listing that I got and where's this other one. Oh, okay. But That's... everything being on this one web, web page was really helpful, and I, I really liked that. Okay. So when you got an email that there was a new property, it had a link in it, and it took you back to your, right. your personal web page. Exactly. And all the properties were listed there as well as the new ones that had come on. Right. And so they would be in order that I received them so that I could easily find them. Like if I said, oh, what was that property I looked at a couple days ago or whatever? I could kind of tell by where it was in the listing mm -hmm. um, where it was. And uh, so I found it really easy to use. And there was a couple of different sort of search tools that were in there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly mm -hmm. how they worked, but um, it just made it really easy for me to find, you know, the property that I was thinking of, go back, look at all the pictures, you know, uh, look at a map of the city, and where those uh, where those different places were and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and so it made it easy once because I mean based on my search criteria and I don't know if it was really broad, but uh, there was quite a few properties and the, and the market had a lot of homes on it last year yep. as you probably remember. So with all these properties, you know, uh, it would have made it really difficult to kind of sort through, but right. because of the tools that were associated with that um, that system. I was able to fairly quickly hone in on those properties I was interested in, identify them, and then when we went looking at the properties, you know, I was going and looking at the houses I was interested in and not wasting time uh, looking at anything else. That's an interesting point. So you found that the process allowed you to only look at the properties that were really interesting to you. Yeah. And I find that with the internet now and our and our portal that, that you went into, which has all the houses, not only does it have pictures, but it has all the room sizes and taxes right. and uh, type of heating and all kinds of information in there. And it, and it will map it for you. And it'll do a bird's eye view. So you can see, I don't know if you clicked on the bird's eye view. Did it have that for you? I can't remember. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just remember it being really useful. <laughs> okay. Because when, when you can know what's in the neighborhood and what's around it, like you, if, when you... Even if you use Google Maps and you do it from the air, if you see that the property's here and there's a, you know, there's a, a commercial store across the street or something, you don't want to be in that busy an area, you rule it out right away. So right. you get to see a lot fewer homes, but they all are very close to what you're looking for, which should shorten the time and make it yeah. very efficient. I, I think, no, kind of, of interest in that. I did use Google Maps together with the system okay. because the imagery in that on Google Maps is so good and you can do the street view right. as well as the aerial view and you can see, you know, like you said, the neighborhood and, you know, the properties in the immediate vicinity of the house you're looking at. And so I found that was, uh, that combination was really, uh, really worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I, I had to kind of adjust to at, at first was the room sizes because the pictures today... You know, they have these really good wide-angle lenses. Right, they yeah. make every room look really big. That's their real job, And, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, when, when the first couple of houses I visited, I was kind of shocked at how small they really were. Okay. You know, I just kind of remember looking at it going, geez, the, the perspective from the image on the, on the website or whatever was very different than actually being in the house. And so um, it took a little adjustment from, from that kind of perspective uh, at the start. Mm -hmm. was recognizing, okay, all of these rooms are a little smaller than what they look in the pictures. Right. And okay. then I started to, like, like you said, pay attention more to the dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then you can get, a, get a, a sense of what is it that I'm looking at. Is this really a big living room or is it kind of tiny? Yeah. Is it just good photography or is it really uh, <laughs> uh, the kind of house that I'm looking for? Yeah, maybe even a little Photoshopping. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I could understand that. <laughs> so the... the um, the beauty is now, especially when you've lived in other homes, is you can go and 
measure where your existing pro home is, right? Where the room sizes, and then go by the room sizes that are right. on the listing and go, okay, my furniture will fit here because this room is a foot wider, or two feet wider, and that kind of thing. So, so that's great. Yeah, awesome. Um, so how closely did the house that you ended up buying match the criteria that we discussed the first, the first day in that consultation? I think pretty closely. I think at the time I said I was looking for three or four bedrooms with uh, you know, three or four bathrooms, and that's exactly what we ended up with. Uh, I wanted to be inside the green belt, and uh, that's where I ended up. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted something that was newer, but um, you know, still affordable. And um, what were some of the other things we talked about? Um, or something on a bus route. So I think you know most of the criteria uh, mm -hmm. were, were met really well, and you know I've been in the house now for almost three months, and it's really working for me. Okay, so it's really only been three months. There. I was thinking it was five yeah. or six months. No, it's only been three months. Okay, no, I think the close <laughs> date was the thirteenth of November. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, so so oh, recent. but it was we bought it in the summer though. It just yeah. didn't close until November. That's right. Yeah, it was okay, a bit of a longer close. Mm -hmm. The family had a few things. I guess they wanted to. Uh, take care of before we, we went. And right. that was kind of part of the negotiation process was willing to uh, extend a, the due date or the, the close date mm -hmm. in order to accommodate them. But I think it also meant that uh, maybe we did better price-wise. I don't know. Yeah, you get it. I think you did well. Because <laughs> once we found the property, then we went back to the office, right? When you, you said, okay, this, I think this is it. Let's, let's maybe put an offer in. And we went back and we did some comparison. I did some comparison on the computer. And as a matter of fact, that house, I think maybe the, the realtor missed the mark a little bit, maybe oh, yeah? underpriced it. Because uh, there's different, different brands of homes, different builders demand a slightly different pricing. And he priced it more like uh, the, lower, the lower brand builder. And uh, all the ones that were of that, that manufacturer or those builders uh, had all sold higher. So I think you did really, really well. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty excited. And um, one of the neat things about it, and I haven't really started to renovate that yet, but the basement has like almost eight foot ceilings. And so okay. when I set that up as the rec room that I have planned and I've got a pool table coming, I think it's going to be just perfect okay. because it does have all that head space. You know, I didn't want to end up in a, in a basement that had, you know, six and a half foot ceilings or whatever, right. and you feel like you're... You're uh, in a cave, and yeah. you kind of have to crouch down. And, uh, you know, my son at 18, um, he's got some very tall friends, and they'd be banging <laughs> their head on the ceiling, I'm sure. So Yes. Um, and so do you have a, a home theater in mind? Or yeah, that so that, that's, I have a pool table coming. Um, I want to put in a home theater and a bar in one corner, and also um, I want to put in a bathroom down in the basement as well. Okay. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it should yeah. be good. And when you're going to do a, a home theater, if you're going to do projection, the ceiling height's very important that you oh, can get, a, okay, get the projector sense. up high enough uh, because the more height you have, what happens now with the, with the wide aspect is you can get wide, but you can't get too wide because you need the depth. And okay. if you, so you can, it limits, really it's usually the ceiling height that limits how big a screen you can actually buy. That makes a lot so of sense. So when you go to do that, I can talk to you. Okay. I did all the uh, research when I did my home theater on projections and, and um, what size of room you need or how far back uh, you I've need been kind of looking all already, and one of the things that surprised me is they say that the screen that you're going to project on, mm -hmm. you got to invest in that too. You can't just get a good projector because if the screen isn't good quality, then you're not going to get a good image. Absolutely. Yeah. The screen is half the battle. Right. They said yep. you should spend half your budget on the screen and half your budget on the projector. Well, I'll show you a place that has great value. Maybe, okay. maybe you'll spend a quarter or a half of what you're spending on the projector on the screen. Oh, and, yeah? And still get a fantastic okay. screen. That'd yeah, be great. Four, 4K uh, high-definition screen. I'll tell you, that's, that's one of the things that uh, I find about our relationship is that we seem to have some very similar interests. And every time <laughs> I talk to you, I walk away with these little tidbits of, of knowledge or information that uh, helps me out one way or another. So it's, uh, it's really great. Yeah, it was Thanks actually that. that was funny when we were when we were actually doing the home inspection on your property. Do you remember they had that 
that box on the outside of yeah. the window and your and your home inspector didn't know what it was. That's right. And Google came in handy because <laughs> I figured it out pretty quick that it was a fire door. Yeah. Because uh, because the proximity of your home to the next home, you couldn't have a window there unless you had a fire door to drop if if the house caught on fire because the window will blow out and it will catch fire to the neighboring house. So they have code on how far the property has to be to have right. a window. So I think I need to get that serviced, and uh, that's kind of the next thing I have to figure out. Yeah, because they'd actually come put, and service that yeah, thing. They'd actually put a cage over yeah. it or something to keep the birds keep out. The birds out, which would stop the device from working. Actually, yeah, yeah. So I got to figure that out. <laughs> okay, well maybe somebody listening, oh that'd be great. knows yeah how to service uh, one of those fire uh, protection blinds. I guess they call them. Yeah. They drop down, and they're heat sensitive. So. That'd be great. That'd be great. So if you're just joining us, you're listening to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And I have uh, a client of ours here talking with us about the process that he went through. Paul is uh, sharing with us exactly how that made you feel. Um, now, you've, you've said you've bought other properties. Um, what needs did the Decker team meet that you were looking for in a realtor? Um, I think... Number one was lots of experience and the ability to give good advice. Okay. So, you know, the reason I came to you, like I said, was I got a referral from some friends at work. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they had said is, you know, if you're interested in buying some property and maybe doing some investment and not just uh, buying a property for myself, but also looking a bit longer term, I'd like to buy some income properties that you've got all this experience and, and knowledge and the team has been working in that kind of area for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that was really appealing. But like the process we went through when we bought the house, you know, it was initially listed and there was no showings for a couple of days. And, okay. um, you know, you came up with this idea that, well, let's put in a bid right away and uh, see where it goes. And then initially the, you know, the, the seller wasn't too comfortable with the idea and they didn't want to wait a long time for an inspection. And right away you had a solution and said, well, let's get some, an inspector in right away and you're able to find somebody to come in like the next day and do an inspection. So all that kind of experience, all that knowledge, it really made me feel comfortable. You know, I, I wanted somebody that could give me good advice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I didn't need the basic stuff. I think I understand the basic process of you know, getting a mortgage and purchasing a property mm -hmm. and change of title and all those kind of mechanisms and getting a lawyer. But what I really was looking for was somebody with, uh, you know, kind of an in-depth knowledge that could provide, you know, guidance and ideas at sort of a, a more complex um, mm -hmm. situations. And so okay. I thought that that was really the appealing thing. Right. So... In that case, we knew that property, because you'd gone to see 10 or 11 yeah. properties before. We knew that property was well-priced and met all your criteria, and it was going to sell quick. Right. And so we did everything possible to make it advantageous for the seller to accept our, our offer, right? And that, that was the trick. Well, you know, a number of the neighbors came to me since I've moved in, and, uh, you know, we're all shocked at how quickly that sold. You know, we had the uh, the property sold before the the owner did his um, his uh, what do you call it his open house they planned an open house for five o'clock on a Thursday and we had uh, executed the purchase agreement before that uh, open house yeah well and we weren't going to let all those people come in and see it your, was great. your house <laughs> well uh, it was great and and you know there was one other bidder that competed with us and um, you know it was uh, it was really exciting and I was. Like, like I said, I, I felt so confident um, working with you, and uh, I felt I was getting good advice. And when we had to make that, you know, when we had to go ahead and execute that, and it was a bit uh, unconventional, maybe what we're doing, mm -hmm. maybe that's not the right word, but yeah. uh, something that the, I hadn't out experienced. Out of the box thinking, yeah. Um, you know, it was great to have somebody there who could guide me through that, and, uh, you know, I just felt confident the whole way that we were doing the right thing. Okay, great. So it's the... Even in a market, like you said, there was a lot of inventory. There was a lot of properties to look at. And they're not selling that quickly. And that being said, when a property comes up that's a good property, well-maintained at the right price, there's multiple people wanting it. Yeah. 
and so we still had to deal with we competing did. with another offer. And we Even in the slow market that was, uh, you know, that we saw last last summer. Mm-hmm. So all of that process. Was there any time where you you felt, oh, I I, I don't feel comfortable because I don't know what's going to happen next, or I'm not I'm not sure of the process, or was there any time where you felt out of control? So I guess there's there's one kind of thing that that threw me off as we went through this. And it didn't uh, bother me for very long, but it was uh, the, the one thing that happened was I'd looked at sort of the 11th or 12th house, whatever it was, with Candace, and said, no, this isn't the one for me, mm-hmm. kind of quite definitive. And Candace said, well, usually when we've looked at 10 or 12 houses, people are starting to get uh, an idea of what they want. And one of the um, processes Candace went through with me was, you know, let's name the different houses that we see and uh, come up with different names for them. And then you can prioritize, you know, which one meets most of your needs and which one's maybe a second or third uh, based on what you've seen and using this kind of naming convention. So I think we called one uh, Big Wooden Staircase or something. And mm-hmm. I forget what we called them all. We had kind of a name that would kind of click in your head. And anyway, so at, at about after we'd looked at the 11th or 12th house, she said to me, well, usually... You know, people are able to prioritize, and you know, there's at least one or two that have really caught their eye. Right. And I said, Candice, uh, none of them really have struck me. Yeah. I didn't think any of the ones that I've seen so far would uh, I want to buy. And I kind of felt like, oh, well, maybe I'm making a mistake here. Maybe I should be relaxing my standards or, or changing my criteria a little bit in order to meet what's on the market mm-hmm. or the price range that I'm in. Um, and so that was the one time when I kind of felt like, um, I was off track, and I'll tell you, within two or three days of that was when that one house came on the market. And I said, no, that's the one that I'm looking okay. for. So you knew what you wanted. Oh, yeah. We just, we just weren't finding it yet. It had to come on the market. It did. Because it wasn't on the market. Right. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, so you've said you, you bought like six properties before. How did your experience with the Decker team differ from other experiences of buying now, I know some of them you had more rush. They were the military relocations. At, uh, you worked with a, with a team of us, so you, you were communicating with our support staff. You were communicating with me. Uh, you know, when, Cand- when I wasn't available or injured, <laughs> Candace was helping yeah. you out. You know. How did that process work compared to other times you bought? So I think I've been pretty lucky. I've had a lot of good real estate agents that I've worked with. Awesome. And I would, you know, recommend a number of them that I've worked with in the, in the past. And like I said, you know, one was in Pembroke and one was in Halifax and Kingston, so different places. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think I've had pretty good experiences. Um, so it's hard to kind of say, well, you know, there was this aspect that was so much different than okay. anybody else. I think, mm-hmm. you know, there was a lot that was similar. But I think the one thing that really stood out for me, as I, I kind of described already, was that system that you have that allows me to go and look at my properties online. I found that really useful and, and very different from anything in the past where, you know, you get emails or some kind of notice somehow right. and uh, have to, you know, sort through it yourself and, and keep, uh, keep in mind, you know, what you'd seen before and what you looked so at and that kind right. of thing. So you really found that beneficial. I, I did find that yeah. tool really good. Um, and as I said already, I think a little bit too, I appreciated your experience and the way that we were able to, to interact and, uh, and work together. So mm-hmm. I think that was really good. Okay, that's great. And then, um, so then we, we met again after you purchased because you came out to one of my wealth building workshops, right. right? And was there any surprises, any learning there that you thought, you know, were you coming in going, well, I pretty much know a lot about, you know, building wealth or RSPs or TFSAs or investing in real estate? Was it something that caught your eye when you were there? That There was a lot. Um, so in my first visit, you did give me a copy of your book. Oh, okay. And, the, um, the Wealth Formula. The Wealth mm-hmm. Formula. And I, I read that um, pretty, pretty avidly um, within the first few weeks after our meeting and really enjoyed it. And I have read a number of different you know, books in the past, the wealthy barber mm-hmm. and um, oh, I don't know, a, a different different number of things, and I just there's something about your book that that really did click for me. Um, I think I was mentioning to you before. Uh, since I read your book, <laughs> I've gotten ahead and gotten a family doctor again, which I had, hadn't <laughs> had for a while. Okay, uh, I joined a gym. 
I updated my will. Uh, you know, I've done a number of these things that you talk about in your book that's kind of like, you know, you should be doing these things to look after yourself and looking after your family. And I think part of um, what is it really st struck me was, you know, there's some key things that I, I really should be doing to look after the people that I love and make sure that they're looked after, uh, you know, if something were to happen to me. Excellent. And so I've gone ahead and done a lot of those things. So that's kind of the preamble. I guess your question was more about, you know, what did I find out at the seminar? I think there was even more at the seminar. You know, uh, I thought you'd kind of cover what was going to be in your book. And um, it ended up being a, a pretty small audience that night, I don't know if you remember. And so you were able to, you know, talk about a whole range of things that, you know, were more in-depth and different from, you know, just the stuff that was covered in your book. And it was really helpful. And actually, uh, based on some of the interactions we had and the advice that you gave, I've actually uh, changed one of my investments recently uh, and i um, really happy with it and looking forward to seeing how that performs. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. I'm just going to talk about a couple <laughs> of things now. Really appreciate you coming and, and sharing with our, uh, with our audience. Um, we have a client celebration coming up on March the 5th. Uh, if you've uh, been a client of ours, bought or sold, or, or presently thinking of buying or selling, give us a call. We're having a family day on March the 5th. It's a Saturday chili cook-off and pie cook-off. So if you're good at cooking chili or cook good at cooking pies, baking pies, I guess would be a better term, uh, then come out and compete against mine because I'm pretty world famous on those two things. Uh, then we have a couple properties we like to highlight. We've got two waterfront properties coming up. One in Manatic at 750000 That may sound expensive, but that's pretty much a bargain in, in Manatic area for a waterfront property uh, on the Rideau River. And it's not on the back channel. It's on the, on the, on the main channel, a quiet section of the channel, actually, so that you can put a boat in there and, and uh, go boating. Uh, that's a great property. It's not like a cottage. It's, it's a full home. And then we have another one if you want to be a little further out on the Big Rideau, we have one coming up at 599000 It's a beautiful lake house, uh, just gorgeous views, and uh, nice dock down at the water, big big piece of water there, because it's the Big Rideau. That's why they call it the Big Rideau. And uh, so if you're interested in a waterfront property, uh, give us a call at 613-860-4663. And I know it's a little cold yet, but the warmth is coming. The warm weather's coming. And you might just want to be on a waterfront, uh, especially that one in Manatic. means you can have your home and your cottage all combined. Because sometimes people say, well, the cottage is a bit of a pain because you've got to pack everything up and go on the weekend. You've got to maintain two properties, cut grass at two places and, and all of that. Whereas if you have waterfront property right here and then you commute into work, only 10, 15 minutes or whatever, that may be a great alternative. So if you're thinking of selling a home, buying a home, or investing in real estate, the Decker team is the right choice. Give us a call at 613-860-4663. That's 613-860-4663. Bye for now.